Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In Sahih Muslim, we found a, a beautiful hadith uh, narrated by Shaddad ibn Aus, in which the Prophet wasallam explains the need for ihsan or proficiency in all of our actions. The Prophet wasallam said, Allah has decreed al ihsan in all things or to all creatures. So if you kill, kill in the best manner. If you slaughter, slaughter in the best manner. Let your blades be sharp and spare the animal you are slaughtering from suffering. This is a very important hadith uh, with very comprehensive meaning. And there are similar hadiths narrated by others of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which uh, he says, Allah Almighty is Muhsin, that is, he, his, one of his attributes is the perfection of his Ihsan, and so it is also obligatory for us to practice Ihsan. This word is very difficult to translate because it has such a comprehensive meaning. Ihsan basically means doing things well, doing them proficiently, doing them in the best manner possible. Uh, the language of this hadith makes it clear that Ihsan is required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all Muslims or for all of Allah's creatures. That this is an obligation upon us. It also makes clear that it is an obligation towards all creatures. That it is an obligation upon all of us and it is a duty that we owe to all of Allah's creatures. And the comprehensive language of this hadith also implies that Allah has decreed ihsan in all the actions which we perform. So it is necessary for everyone to uh, follow Ihsan. It is necessary to treat all creatures with Ihsan, with this type of behavior. And it is necessary that all of the actions which we do uh, be done to the best of our ability. So it's a very comprehensive hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. When he says Allah has decreed this, or in Arabic, kutiba, meaning that Allah has written this as a written decree before the creation of the heavens and the earth. This implies, according to the majority of scholars, that it is an obligation or a duty uh, for all of us. And there are other examples of this found in the Quran and in the Hadith of the Prophet For example, uh, Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah that fasting is uh, decreed for you, that fasting is uh, written before, uh, as an obligation upon us. So this implies, of course, that fasting is obligatory. Or that, uh, as in Surah An-Nisa, in the fourth chapter of the Qur'an, that prayer, salat, is kitab and mawquta, that it is uh, an obligation decreed upon us for certain specific times. Also, the Prophet ﷺ, for example, uh, used to lead the Muslims in taraweeh prayer, in a non-obligatory nighttime prayer during the month of Ramadan. Uh, but then he stopped leading the congregation in this prayer, and he expressed that the reason for that was that he was, did not want this to be uh, decreed or written as a, a commandment upon all Muslims, to clarify that taraweeh prayer is uh, not an obligation, but it is one of the recommended practices uh, during the month of Ramadan. So this hadith then uh, shows that ihsan, or proficiency in all things and towards all, is a requirement of every Muslim. And no doubt, of course, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us uh, ihsan in many verses of the Qur'an. For example, he says, uh, Allah commands justice and ihsan in Surah Al-Nahl. Uh, be, practice ihsan because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who practice this characteristic. Uh, this obligation, of course, uh, cannot be disputed. And it is well known, for example, the ihsan in our behavior towards others means treating them kindly, treating others according to the Islamic uh, standards of behavior. 
Uh, no one disputes, of course, that it is obligatory for us to treat our parents, our neighbors, uh, and loved ones with respect. In fact, every human being whom we come upon, we have to treat according to the Islamic standards of behavior. Uh, going beyond the limits uh, by showing extra kindness or extra care towards others is then not an obligation, but it is the higher level of ihsan or perfection of one's conduct to go and treat people with the best manner possible, even beyond what is obligatory. This hadith, as we said also, implies that this is an obligation on everyone, and it is an obligation towards everyone, and it is an obligation in every type of action that we may do, that we must be proficient and skilled in doing things as best we can, that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in all of his attributes, we should try to do uh, whatever actions are within our ability to the best of our ability. And this is a standard of Islamic character uh, and behavior that is unfortunately uh, neglected among many Muslims and that we must revive and we must try to be the best examples we can of Islam because this is the way of, of life that Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala expects of all of us. Uh, Obviously, uh, none of us are perfect, and we try to do things by the standards which are set for us in the Quran and Sunnah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require from us the impossible or things which are difficult. Uh, sometimes uh, we have the ability to do things in the most perfect way, the most complete way, by doing extra, by doing things which are beyond the obligatory, uh, for example, in our prayers to follow all of the example of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam in our prayer to the best of uh, our ability. Not to do the minimum actions, but to try to perfect those actions because uh, working hard on the actions of our body helps us to train our hearts to focus in the actions which we are doing. If we simply do the minimum, and for example we pray and we go through worship and do it by rote without even thinking of the meaning, uh, we will often lose the spiritual connection which we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the purpose of our salat. Uh, ihsan means also avoiding whatever is prohibited in our actions, whether openly or in secret. Of course, the habit of the hypocrite or the, uh, the, the, the fake Muslim is that in public, in front of everybody, we do things uh, that will, uh, people will expect of us. We do things to please human beings. But the true Muslim, the person who has ihsan, the person who has uh, the desire to do things well and perfectly, does them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, not for the sake of any human being. And therefore, uh, we should try to make our private actions equally uh, as good as our public actions. So if we pray in private, in our homes, our prayer should be just as good, if not better, than the prayer which we do in public in front of the eyes of human beings. Uh, the obligatory level of our ihsan in our treatment of others, of course, is to respect their uh, obligatory rights, their human rights, which are given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is especially important for those of us who have certain responsibilities over other human beings. Uh, Allah has made some of us, in fact, every one of us, to have responsibility, at least over our own behavior. But then uh, each of us have people who, who are, are underneath us, or property, or other things which are underneath us. So as the Prophet wasallam said, for example, the man is responsible for his family, and the woman is responsible for uh, her household and her children. And each one of us is responsible. Perhaps some of us are leaders in society. Some of us are community leaders or political leaders or religious leaders. Then we have an especial obligation in this case that we recognize our duty towards those uh, who are underneath our care or our responsibility and uh, act towards them in the best possible manner. Uh, for all this, we need Islamic knowledge. Each one of us must know what is the proper Islamic behavior in general and try to do that. Uh, but also we have to know what is the uh, specific Islamic behavior for the situation in which we are in. So if we are, for example, uh, working in, in government, we must know the proper behavior uh, 
uh, that Islam expects? What kind of things would be considered uh, uh, oppression? What kind of things would be considered uh, uh, corruption if we were an official or a government leader? Uh, if we are a Muslim scholar, then what kind of things would be bad examples that others would be uh, watching for us? Also, this hadith tells us that sometimes uh, we have to kill legitimately. In times of war, ihsan means in killing the enemy who is fighting you, who is a danger to you, uh, avoiding casualties among civilians and the innocent, but simply uh, uh, killing the armed combatants and being merciful, doing it as quickly as possible, uh, avoiding uh, torturing and mutilating and needlessly excessive killing which is of no benefit to anyone. This is true, of course, in far, as far as execution uh, of a capital crime, that they must also be killed in the most merciful and quick uh, way possible. And in the case of animals, animals are also underneath our protection and our care. They have to be killed and treated safely. For example, if we're slaughtering, we have to use the sh uh, sharpest instrument possible, and they have to be, have their jugular veins uh, sliced immediately so the blood drains out, and they don't feel any harm. Uh, and uh, also we have to give them uh, an environment which is clean and sanitary so that the animals are not trembling with fear and terror. But when we have to slaughter meat, then the meat should be slaughtered in the best conditions possible, unlike many of the modern factory uh, slaughterhouses in which if you would go in there, the conditions are so terrible and so inhumane that you would uh, not care to eat from any of the products produced in such a manner. But we should follow the Islamic etiquette towards animals, uh, avoiding unnecessary killing of animals, uh, for example, uh, uh, slaughtering animals which are not harmful and hunting them to extinction uh, or endangering uh, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have a responsibility over all the creatures uh, that they should be treated kindly and uh, should not be uh, needlessly uh, uh, killed needlessly slaughtered, and when it is necessary to kill them or slaughter them, to do it in the best way possible. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.